Welcome everybody to Clearwater Jazz Holiday Foundation's Young Lions Jazz Master Virtual Sessions. This is Steve Weinberger, CEO of Clearwater Jazz Holiday Foundation. We are recording these sessions for the purposes of Clearwater Jazz Holiday Education and Outreach. Today's educator musician is Dr. Pete Carney. And the topic is Practicing Safer at Home Advanced Improvisation with Simple Tech. Participants are muted during the duration of the session, but we can unmute you if you have specific questions. Please feel free to use the chat feature or the raise your hand feature and we'll get these questions to Pete or we will unmute you and have a conversation. If you have specific topic suggestions for us, please email them to info at clearwaterjazz.com or if you have any feedback on this or other sessions, we'd love to hear it. We have tons of sessions up, all the way scheduled now through the mid part of June, with more sessions being added daily with all instruments and some wonderful professional musicians and educators. So please check out clearwaterjazzholiday.com slash education. It's our education and outreach page. And uh, we hope to see you at other sessions. We're so happy to have our good friend Pete Carney with us today. Dr. Carney is the Director of Jazz Studies at the State College of Florida in Bradenton. Pete, recently his big band students took eight out of 20 chairs in the All-State Band for State Colleges in Florida. In the last two years, two of his students have won first place in the statewide FCSSA Jazz Improvisation Scholarship competition. He has previously given lectures on Radiohead and Jazz at the National Jazz Conference and given a TED Talk on designing curiosity in music education. His music textbook, Interactive Listening, was chosen by Apple as editor's choice. He has headlined as a saxophonist at jazz festivals, including the Rochester Jazz Festival and Aberdeen Festival in Scotland with his acid jazz group, Orange Alert. Locally, he often hosts the jazz session at Ruby's in St. Pete, downtown St. Pete on Thursdays. Pete is a special friend of Clearwater Jazz Holiday Education and Outreach and an active participant in our Young Lions Jazz Master Session program. Pete Carney, Welcome to Clearwater Jazz Holidays Jazz Master Virtual Sessions. The stage is all yours, my friend. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having me, everybody. Um, uh, we're going through a different time in our lives for everybody, right? We've never been in this situation before, and here it is. So what do we do about it? You know, I think it's a question we all we think about a lot, and I think it's a question we have to think about as musicians, thinking about what we want to keep and also thinking about what's possibly coming in the future. We don't know exactly where this is headed. Um, and I'm of the mindset that like probably 25% of everything is going to change. You know, we don't know what that 25% is yet, but we're, I, I wanted to give you some ideas of, of things that have to do with music. And uh, for me, things that I practice that apply to this situation, but also apply uh, to all music. Uh, it's, um, it's definitely, you know, I'm a, a jazz specialist, but I like these, um, these etudes um, or ways of thinking that I think are really healthy for you in any type of music that you play. Um, as you know, like about jazz, it's, um, it's very much a chameleon and jazz adapts to the world around it. And it, it really jumps into other styles. Um, and I wanted to bring you some stuff to, to take home um, to practice on your own so that you can like look forward into like a new future of being a musician. Um, um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is, is called, I, I call it just sort of informal, it's called droning or just practicing over a drone. I put the two files in the chat. Um, you're welcome to download them there. It's pretty common for uh, musicians to work on tuning with a note and play over the note. But what I like to do, and I encourage a lot of people to practice, is to take that experience to another level. Because a lot of music that we like comes from this very like simple relationship of you playing music against one note. 
You know, if you listen to the beginning of a lot of Coltrane, Love Supreme, or if you listen to Miles Davis and uh, albums like Bitches Brew, there's a lot of songs that are one note songs or even Trombone Shorty. A lot of their songs are based off of how well you can improvise based on just the tonality, the basic idea of improvising over one note. All right. Um, let's see if I can. The, the, the benefit here is that I'm going to kind of give you an example and feel free to throw your hand up or ask a question along the way anytime. Um, it, actually, for me, it's, it, it's great to kind of stop and, and hear what you're thinking. And, and uh, it, it sort of is like talking into an aquarium. You know, you don't get a lot of feedback. So if you have any questions, if you feel free to interrupt me and I'll just keep going um, and, until you ask a question. Um, the benefit here of just playing over a drone is like you get to really focus on your intonation. And, and I'm a firm believer that when you play, you shouldn't think of intonation being like in tune. Like you should think of intonation as a personality of who you are as a musician because you can tune notes differently and it says something different. Like I think it's definitely a factor of us as as individual musicians is where we play in tune. You know, like Coltrane is famous for playing like pretty sharp sometimes, right? And you're not gonna sort of learn that in a textbook. Um, and and it's, not, it's not something you should do all the time. Uh, the point is that like when he plays over these drones and his intonation, his intonation is a reflection of what he's trying to say. So um, that's one thing. The next thing is it, it, it forces you to be creative. Um, it forces you to say, I'm just going to, I have to create music with one note as my, um, as my reference point. And the rest is up to me. The rest is on me as a musician. How creative can I be uh, by myself with one note that I'm bouncing off of to create my own melodies? It also I feel like it helps you focus. Um, it helps me like clear my head before I practice anything out anything anything else like anything like you know complex bebop it's i feel like it's it's kind of crazy to just jump into that sometimes mentally right because it can be very like difficult and challenging and you like you can get ahead of yourself and not know what you're trying to practice whereas when i do these kind of warm-ups um i get a chance to clear out everything that happened before the day and like focus on on the moment right now um, it also kind of gets rid of your ego. Like you just, you play over no, and it's very like kind of, it can be very spiritual. Um, and the great thing is you can use, you can practice your scales in a way that I feel like is very uh, good for your technique because you just kind of practice real slowly. And when you do that, you learn the scales better than when you try and play scales fast. Um, Let's see. The other thing is it's a great way to explore intervals. Like what intervals do I like? What intervals kind of do I want to explore as an improviser? Um, and you also get to play other stuff over a drone. When you're practicing over these like one note um, etudes, it's not that um, there can't be other stuff above it. It means that you're just starting with a reference point and then you're, you're getting, like you listen to Santana, you know, how, how does he start the show or the Grateful Dead? A lot of times they're just, they're playing over this big chord, right? That's in that spiritual part of the beginning of, of any concert is usually there, right? People don't, sometimes you have concerts where people just come out and jam on the first tune. But if you, you know, bands like Radiohead or the Grateful Dead or Miles Davis or Coltrane, they usually start off with something that's very introspective to build the, the truth of the moment and to play something that's really honest and important to clear, you know, to, to clear out like who you are as a person first before you go into something deeper. And if you listen to, you know, and Coltrane kind of uh, was definitely influenced by working with Ravi Shankar in India. And if you talk about the whole continent of India and the continent of Africa, the idea of playing over one note is incredibly important, right? Because if you, and I, I honestly believe it, if you can't play music well over one note, you shouldn't be working on other stuff because it's a real um, it's important for you to build like a like the idea of you as a creator and an improviser in a very simple way 
um, because it's just as hard when I say it's not simple in the way of being um, uh, easy to do. It's just a simple structure. So uh, I gave you guys these two, um, these two files in the chat. But um, let me just play a little bit for you. The first one is this drone. I created this drone and it goes through four keys. It goes through, I'm not gonna play all of it, but it's a great way to warm up your day. What's cool about this is better than your typical drone, uh, which is just like a tuner, right? And because when I play over a tuner, like it doesn't really inspire me, right? Anybody had that experience where you ever playing and you're tuning with a tuner and it just feels kind of like, um, feel, feels flat footed. So this, uh, the drones that I created for you guys, it's their, um, it's just, it was this orchestra sampling project called Tundra and they recorded this hundred piece orchestra like of strings and they're, they're just playing like pianissimo, but because you've got a hundred of them, it creates like this beautiful sound. So, um, I'm going to play a little bit and show you all that stuff I was talking about. It, the benefit is you get to focus on like your intonation, your personality, like playing music that feels real um, and getting like into a deeper moment rather than just always being like, I have to be the jazz guy. I have to be a show off, you know, the, this, this style of stuff really um, forces you to say something that means something personal to you. It prevents you from a, from seeing yourself as a technical person because you have to be just straight up uh, emotional and, and honest. So check it out. I don't know if, how well you're going to be able to hear it, um, but let's give it a shot. You hear me a little bit. Can you guys hear that? Somebody nod your head, yes. Yeah. It's a nice sound, right? Beautiful. This is a concert B flat. there for a little bit with my my C major concert B flat major um, but again the beautiful the beautiful part of practicing over a drone is that it's I just made it B flat major but it's really just B flat okay so let's say I want to work on my uh, B, uh, B flat minor And then the, the cool thing about it too is you start running into history. You start running into famous people. You start playing and you say, oh man, that sounded like Coltrane all of a sudden when I played minor. Oh wait, that sounded a little bit like Miles Davis. That one sounded like Ravel or Debussy. So you, you, you start to realize how much music is really important that's out there that has nothing to do with playing a, a bunch of like technical stuff has to do with you as a person connecting with you know the universe or whatever your universe of music and being able to play beautiful music by yourself um, that could easily be a live orchestra piece right and if you listen to uh, if you go back and check out movies like um, uh, Lethal Weapon 
some uh, and uh, there's a great some of the great soundtracks have David Sanborn, a great saxophone player, with Michael Kamen, and all he kind of does in a lot of ways is just orchestrate a big giant chord and have Sanborn improvise over it, you know, and that's a a nice sort of real expression. Um, let me go back to the drone. So I, I practiced my C major. I could also practice my, I did my, my C minor, but I could just as well explore some of my augmented scales. Like uh, minor third half step scale. Right, so I'm improvising, but I'm practicing my scales in a fun way. I'm totally in favor of that, rather than thinking that you have to practice your scales in this sort of like misery rehearsal every day, you know what I mean? That you're, you have to just do this stuff. You know, in, in terms of jazz and pop music, that stuff doesn't help that much. It, it, it helps, I guess, on some very, like, very, like, fundamental technical level. But for those of you guys that are really interested in jazz, you have to start thinking of the, like, your scales as a spiritual thing. And, the, like, the value of each note has its own, it's like its own little personality. Like, so for me, when I'm playing that, that C, over that pedal, I'm learning the personality of all those note choices. Like we talked about the intonation of choices of those notes. Right, when I play that note sharp, it has a different meaning. Make sense. Um, so check that out. I, I I gave you guys four different drones to practice over. The first one is B flat, and it goes down in whole steps: B flat, A flat, F sharp, and then E. All right. Um, they're all um, they're all as you shift down, you realize that whatever horn you're playing changes the 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 personality of your scale. Then the person, the intonation of your horn sounds really different when you play over a different drone. So you just have to be aware of that. I feel like it's one of the, it really should be like a fundamental of our musicianship, just playing like in a very like sort of Zen like way. I'm not like a super religious dude or, or, and I'm talking about the universe and being in tune with the universe. Like I'm, I'm just, I'm definitely like sort of music spiritual. Like if you don't have spirit and if you don't believe have like a religiousness in your music, it's just not going to con connect with people. So it's like this emotional spirituality of music that, that like touches every religion, right? And all people. And this to me really gets to the heart of it. And it's, it's real interesting because like if you go to every country, you know, why you hear this type of music and you hear it much less in the U S um, I don't know if that's why, cause we're a, a busy country. Um, but if you listen to even like jazz groups from, from Europe, like EST or Pat Metheny, or, um, he's from the U S obviously, but they'll have big moments in their music when it's just exposed. And it's just one person with their instrument playing over one chord. Right. And a lot of times we think of the technical part of musicianship as being so important but it's it's the least um, valuable in some sense compared to the spiritual part of what you're trying to do. That's what people buy. That's why Steve books people at the festival because they bring a, they bring a spiritual thing, an emotional thing that gets people. And I feel like this attitude forces you to get spiritual in your musicianship because it, a lot of times when we learn about jazz, I feel like we wait too long for you to be creative, right? Like if like you're going to practice and do um, all this stuff to play in band and, uh, and I'm guilty of this too, like getting ready for the concerts and all that. 
and we lose, uh, we don't have as much time for like you, the person being creative. Um, but if you're in this workshop, you're obviously one of those people that is interested in like the deeper, the deeper aspect of musicianship. Um, and my, my point here is that you have to dig inside of yourself. Like I, there's nothing I want to teach you to play over the drone because that is a very like, kind of cool and personal thing for you to explore and discover what you have to say as a musician. I think you'll find that like what starts coming out when you play over it is like a, is a, is a deep representation of who you are as a person. I feel like I still play some of the stuff I might have played when I was younger. When I play on this, this type of etude, uh, right? Even though I've grown up sort of and um, try to be, have learned all this complicated stuff, the person, uh, the person of me during this etude is the same person I was as a kid. You know, I've gotten better technically, but it, it gets you in touch with like who you are and uh, what you have to say. All right? Any questions about that? No. Hey Pete, just FYI, I put your um, session materials up under your topic on our website. Okay. So, so your your um, was it like a PDF or a PowerPoint that you yeah, had? I, I just put up some slides that, that um, I'm kind of talking through. That you guys can just go check out the slides. They're just good little points to 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 uh, come back to, right? The most yeah. The, the most important of, of all the stuff I put up there really was this drone. I mean, even if we don't get through all of it, we might do it on like the next session or something. Um, but you'll at least have a chance to look at it now. Uh, what time do we go to, Steve? You got some time. Um, we're, we feel, don't feel constrained here. We've got it's okay. about 4.50. We usually break around like 5, 10 maybe. Okay. You know, okay. so keep going. Uh, so yeah, I would I would just encourage you guys to 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 as a musician start with yourself and and you know practice over this drone, and and I think it'll inspire you when you download it and listen to it. It sounds great on big speakers, so you like you just kind of crank it up and 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 get in the and get in the spirit of like starting your musicianship in a very healthy way, you know. Um, you ever like go from like one task to the next and you realize you can't like the more you do that, the more you mess yourself up because you're, you're not like allowing like space between things to reset and to file and to like to let your brain decompress and put stuff away. Uh, but then you go on a car ride and you go to the next meeting or something and then it's fine because that car ride is, is like your space to clear things out. For me, this drone is my space to, to, to like sort through stuff. And you can, when you play over this, you can feel the things bothering you come up in your head. Like, man, I got to pay that bill. Like, how am I going to come up with that money? Or I can't believe like I'm still on lockdown, like blah, blah, blah. Like all that stuff comes out in a very healthy way and you get to kind of process it musically. I know. Um, so again, I, I practiced this one. I did, I, I played C major, uh, C minor, and then like C augmented, but this saw, this scale could just as well be, um, I could work on my diminished scale or, uh, some kind of like more complicated scale. So this is my, this is just the same, the same idea. And I'm going through this scale real slowly um, with my diminished scale. And it also teaches you how to improvise when things when you play at faster tempos, when you can play good, interesting stuff really slowly, it's always going to make it better when you have to play like with a tempo or with a, a, a band or something. So like this is like like my C uh, diminished scale, which is a half step, whole step scale all the way up to the octave. <laughs> Right, so that top note didn't sound that great until I tuned it down on just a little bit, right? Right, 
Right. You see how you start running into history, and I, like at that moment, I played this, you know, fast stuff, and it just sounded like, oh, that sounds like Ravel, that sounds like Claude Debussy, or that sounds like late Coltrane, you know. So you encounter people on this journey, and you realize you're not the first one that's been here. It's like you you start finding these trails that other people have walked through, and you get to play on that same trail and say, oh man, that's pretty hip, like. That's how Coltrane got to that sound. That's how uh, Duke Ellington wrote Caravan, you know? Like you can, you can just hear him sort of exploring, you can hear Duke exploring a chord you know, if you're really going to study something, you can't study it at light speed. Anything you're going to learn really well is going to be something you're practicing um, at a very slow speed to understand the new material that you're dealing with. Um, so that's droning. I think it's, the, to me, it's the, like one of the like most important parts of, of, uh, of my musicianship. Um, Hey Pete, do you do you use any other technology technology regularly as you're practicing? Oh, I do use like I made this I made this drone on my computer, um, and I use I do use my like home recording equipment for stuff like, and and the other thing is, um, you know, just you can always make music with stuff around you. Uh, where is this thing? I just got this really cool microphone. Right, so check this out. It's a dumb little thing, but it's one of those things that can inspire you because, like, it's this little, it's a little, it's a contact microphone, and it's made by this guy named Crank Sturgeon. I'll type his name into the chat here. He's a cool cat to check out. He makes little cheap microphones. Um, He's a super cool, like uh, underground sort of microphone maker. So this microphone plugs into like a regular thing, but you can put, you just, you, you, you can put it on stuff. Like you can record your heartbeat. Um, you can record like your washing machine and make some music out of it. You can record it's like traffic on the road or you can put it underwater if you buy a certain one. Um, but it's really inventive for making like sounds to make your own music um, that, like might be a little bit sort of off the jazz grid, but very fun for like recording noises. And again, like the whole world of sampling and hip hop comes from that kind of research. So um, again, this is like, if you want to like start digging into like homemade electronic music, there's a, just check out Crank Sturgeon. It's, he's crazy. He's nuts. And um, he kind of makes his living just selling microphones, but this is 25 bucks. That's super low tech. That's as cheap as it gets to like record weird stuff. And the interesting thing is all that little weird stuff you record makes your music really interesting and different. Um, if you listen to any of you guys to like do your homework and listen to chill hop music or um, like other stuff on YouTube, a lot of it is, has like little weird noises or people talking and those little things make a big difference nowadays in terms of commercial music production or um, even like Timbaland, I was just watching a video about him and he was talking about how all these little random sounds, be, you know, like uh, ended up being a hit. It wasn't necessarily just the, um, the big sort of traditional music production. It's the little junky stuff that's really important. Um, so get yourself like a, you can, you know, record stuff with your phone and make interesting sounds um let's see let's see what else so that's like the main thing is if you're not practicing over a drone like you definitely should check it out I'm, i don't know harp on that too much but it's i think it's good for you like spiritually as a musician to to have something to say because sometimes that place just exposes uh you to the emptiness and you have to fill it up you know you have to say okay um, what am I going to do with this? Pete, something else to consider is we're asking some of the participating musicians and educators to add some things to listen to, 
to our sure. Spotify channel, we're going to be creating specific curated playlists for each of the musicians. Uh -huh. So as you participate in this with us, if there are some things you'd point people to check oh, out, for sure. we can add that. We can add it to that. Super cool. I'll definitely have uh, some things uh, to add to that. Uh, I got one more track here and it's this, this one is fun uh, to play over because it's called strange decisions because the rhythm section on this track uh, makes some strange decisions <laughs> and not always the best playing. It was me. Um, and I'm just, I was just made this jam track uh, for you guys to practice with, but what's, you know, usually when you get a play along, what's the deal? It's a play along and um, the rhythm section is perfect. You know, everything's perfect. And so it gives you this sort of strange sense of uh, perfection and it makes you feel like you're perfect, right? But most of the times when you play with music, musicians, they're not perfect. They're usually people kind of, you know, scuff a note here, scuff a note there, especially when you're younger, everybody you play with is learning. So you're all building like the, like your concept of rhythm, right? So you're trying to internalize rhythm, but your rhythms, everybody's rhythm isn't perfect. Even when you play with great people, they can make strange decisions that, you're, that are unexpected. So I made this little track and I'm going to just play along with it for you. And the, the point is, it's, it's just an F. Uh, the, just, the bass player pedals on F and the drummer plays rhythms and um, they're not perfect. And the point is that you should be able to cover for them or that you should be accountable and you should be able to play good music, even though they're sort of scuffling, right? Check it out. Let's listen to it first. Hold on a second. Right. See how like they're pretty good, <laughs> you know, they're going to get a pretty good score at jazz MPA, but they're not, uh, they're not killing it. Right. And I, so I was like, man, but the, the real deal of being a musician is being able to make them sound good. Right. Can you play with other cats that aren't perfect and make the music sound good, make them sound like they're uh, doing a good job. Um, so let me just, I'll just play over it again. It's just an F pedal. Uh, it's just, you can be F anything. It could be F dominant. I like playing it as dominant, um, but it could be alter dominant or minor, whatever you want. The point is, can you still sound good when, uh, when the band behind you is making mistakes? Because that happens on every single gig I've ever done, right? I've never gone to a gig and had a play along. <laughs> Like that worked out. It was everybody's always like adapting and improvising, and sometimes making sort of regretful note choices. And you can hear that sort of rhythmically here. So I'm just going to try and play with them and make them sound good. <laughs> You didn't notice that they were kind of scuffling as much, right? Because I'm, I'm trying to carry them rhythmically. Does that, does that, does that fly? And nod your head, yes or no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's, that's a cool metric for you as a musician is, can I play and make the band that's scuffling? Can I make them sound better? Because if you can do that, um, you can, then you can do it all the time. The other thing you'll listen to is that if I hear somebody scuffling behind me in the band, what should I do? You know, should I try and cover everything up or should I let them sort it out? 
It's a little of both. It's a little of both, right? So, so there's times when I don't, I could, I don't know what the track is going to do next, and so I'm kind of waiting to see. It, it puts a nice little bit of space in the music, and it makes it sound like we did it on purpose. <laughs> Check it out. Like I don't know what they're going to do, but that doesn't mean I should bulldoze over them, right? I mean, they're never going to figure it out because they're a track now. <laughs> like they're never going to get better, <laughs> so you're stuck with them. But that, but the truth is, is that when you hear people like you know making mistakes, it's good to to help them to sometimes cover it and sometimes just take a step back and then jump in again. But you don't want to ever, what you don't want to ever do is sort of play unconfidently because then you're making it worse. You know, then if you're not sure what you're doing, then they are not, then they feel more insecure about themselves. And then everybody feels a little worse off as a musician, right? So not playing is great because it creates space. But if you do play, do something confidently and it'll help the group get back together. The track won't get better because they're not real people. But if you play a confident rhythm, you will groups will follow you really quickly. Because if you're not sure what's going on, you can be sure they're not 100% either. And somebody would like somebody to tell us where the one is. Where is the beat? Just tell me where the one is, and then everybody can get back together. <laughs> problems because my confidence is like helping us get it together or creating the illusion of us getting it together that makes sense um what you don't want to do is this you know right no, you don't want to do that. That sort of shyness doesn't help the situation. You can be, uh, I want to say you can place things that are sort of passive, but you don't want to be shy and passive. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to play something that's sort of like passive, but still confident. I was sort of non-committed, but my articulation was still strong and that confident, like the way I'm sort of like attacking the notes makes the situation, it can be like open, but it can't sound like a mess. You know what I mean? It can be unstable in a sense, but it can't be the, like, uh, I don't know. It can't sound like nobody knows where it's going. It, it has to sound like you're not you're not you're not where you're going yet, but you you do know where you're going to go. You may not be there yet, right? Right? And the grid, I'm still on the grid. I'm still on that eighth note. But uh but da um dee da but uh where it, no matter what happens, I'm trying to make sure I pop an eighth note that is straight on the metronome in a sense so like you're you're the metronome so i would encourage you guys to practice with that one too um it's fun and it makes you better you know and it forces you to listen and it forces you to use space and people do play like this sometimes the truth is you will play gigs with people that do this to you and you know and you're like dang dude like what are you gonna do like 
you you're gonna have to dig your way through it so hey pete sure. pete can you send me um the um uh, drone files and the strange decision files as an mp4 because uh, sure yeah because that will be easier for us to upload to the website right now we've got your um pdf up there but you can't click through within that so if you give me in the mp4s we'll put all the drone files right up under your session recap okay after we do this is that cool yeah that's not a problem okay that's great we're running a little bit um down yeah, I think we're on time now let me get let me do some uh, announcements and maybe think of a, just a closing thought while i do this so we really appreciate everybody attending today and we're so happy to have pete with us we know he'll be back um with some other really cool topics um this was awesome today pete thank you so much thank you. Um, Thanks for, for, those, for those of you that um uh have been participating we really appreciate it all of these sessions are free they're brought to you by clearwater jazz holiday foundation we thank the foundation and we thank all of our sponsors and supporters helping to expand the reach of these sessions including the out downing tampa bay jazz association the pinellas realtor organization central pasco association of realtor and many others um, check out clearwaterjazz.com education i just send it out again in the chat feature. That's got all of the upcoming sessions. We also do session recaps. So you can click on a condensed version of what you saw, or if you missed a session, you can check out a session recap. And um, we've got tomorrow, Tyler Wortman and Frank Williams with us. They're back with us doing another basic trombone fundamental session on tonguing and articulation. And if you have not experienced a session or interaction with Frank Williams before, I encourage you to attend. It is an experience always, and <laughs> you, are, you are bound to get something out of it. We've got Alejandro Arenas with La Lucha back with us next week on Tuesday with a session series he's doing on bass styles. This one coming up is an approach to playing Brazilian and Latin grooves. And then on Wednesday the 27th, one of the best trumpeters around, James Suggs, is back with us on a topic he calls developing your own sound. So if trumpet is your thing, you're going to want to be there for James. Anything. Uh, yeah, you should just go hear him. You definitely see him. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. So we got some incredible people. Just check out the uh, the upcoming sessions. There's going to be something for everyone, and they're all free. So, um, Pete, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thanks again for um, being with us. This was just great. Thanks, thanks guys. I'm glad to see so many faces and uh, see so many musicians hanging out. It's important for us to – stick together uh you know again like Sonny Rollins took two years off and went to the bridge to practice uh every great musician has had a quarantine in their life at some point where they went to the shed and practiced so it's a fantastic time for you guys to practice and come out of this on the other side with a lot to say um so be creative um you know and uh find ways to find new ways to practice all the time do you guys have any questions um before I'm going to do, I didn't get to everything, but hopefully on the next session, I'll get to some more points, um, like other, other ways to practice that I like to explore. Um, anybody have any questions before we go? Or anything? Yeah. It doesn't have to be a question about anything we did. Just like jazz questions, like music questions. You, you can use the, the chat feature. Just raise your, raise your hand. We can unmute you. No one. All right, Pete. Good to see so many familiar faces. All right, man. So we'll see we'll see you next time, uh, Pete, when you're with us. And everyone, stay tuned, be safe, and keep playing music. See you later, right. everybody. Thanks, everybody.